My name is Carolyn Musen Berkowitz, and I love snacks. Welcome to the Finding Favorites podcast, where we explore your favorite things without using an algorithm. Here's your host, Leah Jones. Hello, and welcome to Finding Favorites. I'm your host, Leah Jones, and this is the best of 2023 call in show. Every year, I ask guests and friends to send me voice memos and tell me what were the best things they found in 2023. This year was no exception. So let's get things kicked off with Chris Bagg from Upper Middle Brow Podcast, Monica Reida, Cameron McKenzie, and Vanessa Ricci Thode. Hey, Leah. Uh, Chris Bagg here from the Upper Middle Brow Podcast. Um, this might be too late. I hope it is not. But uh, my favorite thing in 2023 is a book that is almost 50 years old. <laughs> uh, Jesse and I did a couple episodes on Joe Haldeman's The Forever War, and it is so good and was so prescient when it was written in 1974 that um, I listen to podcasts these days about science and technology and culture, and they will often talk about things that make me think about the ideas that Joe Haldeman came up with. Uh, just today, I was out cross-country skiing, and two of the people on the podcast I was listening to were talking about time dilation and artificial intelligence and cloning. And we might have just been talking about the final section of The Forever War. Um, it was an amazing read. Um, it's a classic, and uh, I have obviously come to it quite late. But uh, I think that was the thing that made the biggest impact on me in 2023, and I am recommending it to everyone who will listen. Um, I really hope that I got this to you on time. I kind of suspect that I did not, but maybe there's a way for you to use it. Uh, thank you so much. Love the show, and I'll talk to you soon. Hi, my name is Monica Reda. And in 2023, I loved the manga series Prince Freya, the second season of the television show The Gilded Age, and I also loved the podcasts Marked Safe and CoasterRadio.com. Prince Freya is a manga series about a young girl named Freya, who is the uh, spitting image of the prince in the kingdom and the prince is assassinated and her childhood best friends who are knights for the prince decide she will take the prince's place so, so no one has any clue the prince has been assassinated um, and it is beautifully drawn the fight sequences there are several fight sequences in this series are very kinetic to look at. The lettering is beautiful, and it also deals with what has become one of my favorite tropes in comics this year, which is someone takes the place of another person, and then everyone is surprised because, well, that's not how the prince would normally act. Uh, I also want to mention that I was introduced to this series by uh, Terry Gant, who has been on Finding Favorites a few times. And he had told me that the series ruled, and he was not uh, lying about that. So check out the manga series Prince Freya. Um, I also loved season two of The Gilded Age, a show whose first season I don't even think I finished. But for some reason, season two picked up. There's more conflict. There's more tension. Uh, and even though it still feels like quite often there are very low stakes, who will join which opera come? Uh, supporting which opera in New York. Um, it's become much more interesting this season. It's become appointment viewing in our household. Uh, and at that same time, it's interesting because it's comfort food TV, while at the same time, characters are dying. Um, there are strikes happening in 1800s Pittsburgh. Uh, so there is some high stakes thing. There are some high stakes things happening, but it's still very 
comforting and there's beautiful costumes. And if you love Broadway, uh, so many of the actors, it's, it's really kind of a who's who of Broadway. Um, so I highly recommend if you want a comforting TV show, watch season two of the Gilded Age on Max. You can skip season one. I don't even think I finished season one, but season two is wonderful. Uh, and then, uh, I also want to mention that uh, in this year, I really got into the podcasts Marked Safe, which is a disaster podcast. I got into that podcast because I wanted to listen to a podcast discuss the uh, Verrucht Schlitterbahn situation. And uh, the episode that they do on that incident, you can tell that the host, Brianna and Melanie, have a lot of empathy for the victims' families. They had a lot of outrage at the guy who was the head of Schlitterbahn for his mass hubris. And when you listen to their episodes, there's a lot of empathy and sympathy that they have for the victims and the victims' families of these horrific in incidents and a lot of anger that they have of people who, through hubris or you know, having gobs of money, really don't care. Um, and so it's very refreshing because I was afraid that podcasts like that, and there are some podcasts would be like, whoa, this really sick thing happened. Isn't that so cool and mysterious? So it feels more like they're doing it out of being interested in what's going on rather than sitting around and doing it just to get popular. It, it doesn't feel as cynical of an exercise as a lot of true crime podcasts. Um, and then I also uh, found that I really fell in love with the podcast coasterradio.com. Uh, it has a bit of a sound that reminds me a bit of uh, the old, listening to uh, AM talk radio, news radio as a kid. Uh, and listening to two people who are just massive roller coaster enthusiasts talk about the roller coaster, the amusement park industry, talk about roller coasters, try to do what they call coaster domus and try to predict, you know, what is going to happen with parks or what is this thing being teased. It's almost a comforting podcast to listen to. And so the discovering, even though coasterradio.com has been in existence for more than a decade. Uh, discovering those two podcasts this year has actually made it easier to part with some podcasts that I used to love and lost me this year. So those are the things I loved in 2023. You can find me on Instagram at Monica Reda, where I am teasing some art projects that I will hopefully release in 2024. Thank you so much. Hello, my name is Cameron McKenzie. I am a writer uh, living in Roanoke, Virginia. Um, I've been on the podcast a couple times. It's great to uh, be asked to do um, my favorite things of 2023. I think I'll start with probably the most fun thing, which was uh, mezcal. I discovered mezcal this year. Um, I drank a lot of tequila in college to the point that I didn't even want to smell it for about 10 or 15 years. Um, but I'd sort of gotten to the point I was, you know, tired of, of uh, bourbon. I was uh, interested in mezcal, which is tequila's smokier cousin, and told myself uh, one day I would really settle down and try to figure it out. And that day was this year, really this spring and summer. Um, I advise if you're interested in mezcal to start with a Paloma. Paloma is a little bit of mezcal, a little bit of grapefruit juice, a um, little bit of club soda, a little bit of lime. Shake that up. Enjoy it. It's wonderful. Uh, if it's over 70 degrees or if it's under 70 degrees, it's not going to do you wrong. Um, another great thing that I found out this year, um, or really sort of that I discovered or finished, was the novel Blindness by Jose Saramago. Um, this thing, I think I probably started it in the middle of, of quarantine. It took me years to finish it. Um, it's not that long. It's just... <laughs> It's about um, a city that uh, everyone goes blind. It's a plague of blindness. And it's really about how everyone sort of deals with that. There are no paragraph breaks in the book. There's very little punctuation. Um, it can at times be a disorienting read. And I would read it and put it down. 
and then read it and uh, get angry with it. And then I would spite read it. I'd read it to go to sleep. The, the, I just couldn't get away from the book for some reason. But in the last 200 pages, this thing just really picks up like a freight train. And by the time I got to the end, I was, um, gosh, my faith in literature <laughs> had been reaffirmed, really. I didn't know it was uh, in dire straits, but this this book really really brought home the power of what a good book can do. Uh, I was, I was very, very, very impressed by that. Um, and probably the last thing in 2023, something that really opened my eyes was really just my own hometown. Um, or not my hometown, but the town that I live in, which is uh, Roanoke, Virginia. And I moved here about six years ago from uh, San Francisco and uh, it's quite different. It's a little town in the mountains. San Francisco is San Francisco. Um, and trying to make that adjustment um, and live in this place uh, has been strange at times. But really this year, I had a lot of friends from other states come to visit and they were really just blown away by this place. They were blown away by how beautiful it is. Um, they were blown away by how friendly people are. Really, the food <laughs> is good. Believe it or not, if you know where to look, you can get excellent food. Uh, it, there's just so many things to see and do here. And I hadn't really paid attention to that. I hadn't really seen it for what it was. I needed to see it through other people's eyes. And I was able to do that this year. Um, and that was that was really exciting. It made me uh, uh, happy to be where I am and, and even really proud in a lot of ways. So those are my favorite things from 2023. You can find me at CameronMcKenzie.org. Uh, I got a book of flash fiction coming out next year. Um, fingers crossed. And maybe if you're around at AWP, I'll see you there. Take care. Thanks. Hello, my name is Vanessa Ricci Thode, and I'm a fantasy author. Uh, my faves for 2023 were still Monarch Butterflies and Sequoias because they're amazing. I released 101 Monarch Butterflies into the wild this year. I tagged a bunch of them and uh, the data will be released soon. So I should find out if any of mine made it to Mexico, which would be really cool. Um, and I just read a really cool thing about redwoods. They're a cousin to the sequoias, but they're also incredibly cool trees um, where there was one that was thought to be killed by a wildfire, but it has new buds. They're like phoenix trees. You burn them down and then they're just like and grow again. Super cool. You should check them out. Um, one of my perennial favorites is dogs because they're great. Um, and a new addition to my faves for this year uh, is the Doctor Who specials for the 60th anniversary. Amazing. I'm so looking forward to more of the 15th Doctor. He's so cool. Um, all right. Books. My favorite book this year is World Running Down by Al Hess. It's it's just incredible. Um, it's basically uh, Murderbot times Fury Road. Uh, it's delightful and endearing. Um, you should super check it out if you're into sci-fi. <laughs> Speaking of Murderbot, if you're into sci-fi and haven't read this one yet, uh, it's it's a super cool series. I love it. It's my favorite. I've read the entire series dozens of times. Um, it's about a sarcastic security android who has uh, anxiety and depression and just wants to be left alone to watch TV. But uh, as soon as anything threatens its humans, it jumps into action. Come for the snark, stay for the competence porn. Um... Speaking of books, I have released four fantasy novels this year, which was ridiculous and crazy. Um, they're about queer dragon riders. If you ever thought that How to Train Your Dragon would be better if Hiccup was a lesbian firebender, uh, check out my books. This one especially is the um, most How to Train Your Dragon-ish of them all. They're all great. I had so much fun writing them. And uh, each sequel in the series uh, starts with a synopsis of the previous books in the series. So you can start anywhere that looks good. Um, you can find me on Instagram and Blue Sky with the handle V Ricci Thode. That's V R I C C I T H O D E, um, where I mostly post about my dogs. They're great, they're cute, they wear bow ties and eat little pancakes. Um, or you can check out my website, which is thodestool.ca, and sign up for my newsletter where you can get a free short story from the dragon's point of view. Uh, so that's it for me. Have a fantastic holiday season and may 2024 bring you lots of new favorites and a side helping of peace and joy because we can all use more of that.
thank you to Chris, Monica, Cameron, and Nessa for kicking off the best of 23 episode. We're going to move right into the second part. We've got Shy Corman from Friday Night Movie Podcast. Shy and I had one of my highlights of the year, which was going to see Weird Al Yankovic at the Kennedy Center. Very fun. Taya Lux, a filmmaker in Los Angeles. Jesse Dukes, co-host of Upper Middle Brow Podcast. Amy Guth and Rocco Cataldo, also filmmakers currently based in LA. So we're bringing out the filmmakers, the California, the coastal um, friends for this second part. Hey, Leah, it's your buddy Shy from the Friday Night Movie Podcast calling to give you my favorites of the year. And since, you know, we love talking about movies, uh, I'm going to go with my two favorite movies. And uh, this year, my favorite movies are a couple of big blockbusters. Uh, One of them uh, is Barbie. Saw it four times already, at least twice in the theater with my kids. It uh, inspiring, funny, beautiful, uh, loved that movie. And then the other one, which is really going to be my favorite of this year, is Guardians of the Galaxy 3. All I can say is bring a tissue. It uh, was exciting. It made me a little misty, made everyone else I saw it with cry. And I would say in an era where superhero movies have been uh, repetitive or formulaic. This one was just a phenomenal closeout of that series. And it has a lot of unique characteristics and probably some of the best music movie moments ever. I, I love music movie moments. So those are my favorite things of the year. Of course, my other favorite thing of the year is anything that Leah Jones does on a podcast. So Candy Chat Chicago and Finding Favorites, obviously a couple of my favorites as well. Happy New Year. My name is Taya Lux. I'm an actor, writer, comedy person, filmmaker type in Los Angeles. Uh, Around this time last year, I premiered my short film that I co-wrote and produced. And this past year, the thing that was so great was I learned so much in the festival circuit. We had a really great run and uh, I met people who inspired me, who are now my colleagues. Uh, Networking's a dirty word, but it's not if they're actually your friends. I uh, took that knowledge and I put it towards writing by myself a a new short film and I shot it in December. So now I hope that 2024 will bring me uh, another great year. So I wish you all happiness. I know it's really hard right now, but I'm trying to find it myself and I find it when I'm able to do my art in some form. So happy 2024. Hello, Finding Favorites. This is Jesse Dukes. I am a writer and radio producer, freelance editor, co-host of Upper Middle Brow. And uh, you've heard me on Finding Favorites twice now, talking about a couple things. Um, So for the best of 2023, I want to share something old that I discovered and something new that I believe emerged this year. At least I read it this year. Uh, So the old thing is the biographical book of Bob Marley called Catch a Fire by Timothy White, uh, who was a journalist. He actually worked for Billboard for years, and apparently whenever he had vacation, he spent his time in Jamaica wandering around, interviewing dozens, if not hundreds of people to create this really profound, epic biography of not just Bob Marley, but his community, his friends, his family, and the context uh, that he emerged in. And 
I love the music. I love Bob Marley's music. I mean, you can't hear a song like, um, you know, Redemption Song or No Woman, No Cry and not recognize that there's some brilliance there. And um, I've also gotten into finding old recordings from Jamaica in the 1960s, you know, ska or reggae, and just being really taken with this rough and tumble uh, recording and live music uh, culture and industry. Um, so the book is it, it it gives you a wonderful glimpse of post-colonial Jamaica, the politics, the incredible music and recording industry, some of the heavy hitters like whose names I'd heard before, like Lee Scratch Perry or Cox and Dodd, um, the it enigmatic Chris Blackwell, this kind of fascinating white Jamaican aristocratic man who was so influential. And then, of course, Bob Marley, and his lifetime friends, Peter Tosh, Bunny Whaler, um, Rita, his wife, Sadella Booker, his mother, and some others. Um, it's a fascinating story. Uh, and also his connection with Rastafarianism and that particular sect. And Haile Selassie, the king, later emperor of Ethiopia, and how he figured in to this particular religion. It's a fascinating story. It gets you excited about those records. And it, it's a great book. My new recommendation is the Barbara Kingsolver novel, Demon Copperhead, uh, which you've heard about it. It is a kind of retelling of uh, David Copperfield, the Charles Dickens novel. And, you know, I was skeptical. I feel like I've encountered a lot of Dickens redos. Uh, we talked about the Diamond Age on my podcast, Upper Middle Brow. I recently read The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. And those are both good. But I'm just like, do we really need another one? But... Immediately, the voice of the character, Demon Copperhead, whose real name is Damon Field, and he has red hair, so they call him Copperhead. Uh, the voice is so strong. The story fits the context. I grew up adjacent to Appalachia. Um, you know, I spent my summers in Blacksburg, which is really on the edge of Appalachia. I'm familiar with this context. I wasn't really of that culture, but I knew people who were. I find it painful when people in cities or other places kind of trade in stereotypes around Appalachians. Um, Yes, there are problems in Appalachia, but there's also something really beautiful uh, about the culture of the people in the mountains. It is more diverse than people realize. It is more profound than people realize. And Barbara Kingsolver totally gets that. And, you know, it's all set in the context of, uh, you know, the story of an orphan. Um, but many of his travails have to do with uh, opiates and drugs, uh, which has been a terrible problem for Appalachia and the entire country. So the book feels like a fiction accompaniment to Beth Macy's book, Dope Sick, or my friend Jack Schuler's book, This is Ohio, a bunch of others, Dreamland by Sam Quinones. And uh, the final moment, I was listening to it as I was driving my camper trailer across the country, and it ended at the very moment I arrived in Odessa, Texas, and made a right turn on I-10 and pointed the nose of my vehicle at the Pacific Ocean. And that really, really resonated with the last couple paragraphs of that book too. And man, that moment just got me. Um, so those are my two. I hope everybody had a great year. I hope you're optimistic about 2024. Uh, I hope we have peace soon. Oh yeah, check out Upper Middle Brow at uppermiddlebrow.com. You can find me at Curious Dukes on Twitter, and you can find me in other places. Happy New Year, everybody. I'm Amy Guth, and I'm a film producer and screenwriter and a broadcast journalist. My favorite thing about 2023 was a motto that I took in a different way. So a friend of mine always says, if you can't fix it, feature it. And I've always loved that, but I've always thought about that in terms of making the best of situations. But in 2023, I kind of leaned into it in a different way and thought about it and framed things more in a way that was more about embracing and interrogating things when there's a feeling of resistance. And I found that there was a lot of power and relief and freedom in that. And so I think that can mean getting very real with ourselves about a topic or an idea that we've been avoiding confronting about ourselves. It can mean 
challenging a narrative. It can mean taking really bold action. It can just mean thinking about things in in different ways and, and giving yourself more options. And the more I've kind of embraced that idea of the shadow self and embrace the idea of challenging what seems possible or doable or expected, the more freedom that I felt for sure. So the idea of leaning into what might be considered a liability or a flaw has actually proved to be a really powerful thing for me in 2023. And, it, and it's definitely my favorite thing about 2023 because it led me to so many epiphanies and adventures and art and work and, and cool opportunities that I wouldn't trade for the world. So that's 2023 and hopefully more of that in 2024. You can find me at, at Amy Guth, G-U-T-H, on Blue Sky and Instagram. You can get my bi-weekly-ish newsletter at amyguth.com and my daily nonfiction writing prompt at guth.substack.com. I'm Rocco Cataldo, and I'm a film director and screenwriter. My favorite thing about 2023 was that it was the first time in my life I've been super adventurous. I started and am ending the year on the West Coast, drove cross-country three times, flew cross-country 25 times. I became a U.S. citizen in 2020, but 2023 was the year I really got out and saw all of the U.S. beyond its airports. I moved here from Italy, and in 2023, I decided to get comfortable with the uncomfortable and did things differently and had an adventure just for the sake of adventure. It's really beautiful. From the Cascade Mountains to the Grand Canyon to the Badlands to the small towns to the hole-in-the-wall restaurants I found from New York to L.A., Chicago, Seattle, Vegas, Scottsdale, Miami. So much to see and so many adventures out there. You can see my film Elvis of the Yukon coming up in 2024 and follow me on Substack, rocco.substack.com and on Potenza1 on Instagram. Buon anno a tutti e salute to the great adventures of 2024. And why don't we round out the episode? I have got Joe McCauley, Steve Higgins, Pam Rose, Phil Motaz, and Carolyn Musen Berkowitz rounding out the episode. I guess if I wanted to share a few of my favorite things this year, one was going to live shows. I saw How Did This Get Made? in New York, Philadelphia, and Chicago, and also had the joy of bringing new people along for the ride and introducing people to How Did This Get Made to the live show experience. Saw the Doughboys live, saw Kyle Kinane and Nicole Byer do stand-up comedy, saw so much theater because the Broadway in Chicago season was dense, but well worth it. Surprise of the season was Boop the Musical, which I just had an absolute blast at. Um, other great things that happened this year. One of my best meals was at a restaurant called OCD in Tel Aviv. Um, I went in 2019 after suffering uh, terrible food poisoning and did not get to fully appreciate the meal. So going back this summer with Ronnie was very special. And... I don't know. It was just a really, it's been a very hard year, I think, for a lot of us. Um, and, but there, you know, these clips remind me of so many moments of joy, whether it's watching TV or being with friends or getting to know these guests on the podcast. This podcast continues to be one of my favorite things. Um, bringing on Rob Abrazado as a sound engineer to help produce the show has brought me a lot of joy because it's given me time back. And so the podcast continues to be one of my favorite things. And yeah, so let's round it out with Joe, Steve, Pam, Phil, and Carolyn. Hey, Leah. It is Joe McCauley calling in for the 2023 best ofs for finding favorites. And I wanted to call in with a few of my favorites. Um, I'm going to start with my favorite movie, which was Saltburn. And I know we've talked about this a few times. I thought Emerald Fennell did an amazing job of directing and bringing 
the audience so close to the fine line between disgust and desire and that made it so compelling and interesting and also in a very feet uh eat the rich kind of way right um it was sexy it was funny it was surprising it is a thriller and there were some turns that I wasn't quite expecting and um did I mention it was sexy I think I did and Mm, that ending, right? What an ending. I need a minute. Okay, so that was my favorite movie, uh, my favorite music. I was really digging the new Mitski album this year, the new Sophia and Stevens album. And it was just a good year all around. And I think a lot of that was because... I have amazing friends. I have you, I have Jocelyn, um, and so many other great friends. And I want to thank you both um, and all my other friends for sticking around and cheering me up and being there for me. So happy 2023. And thanks so much. Bye, Leah. Hello, Finding Favorites listeners. I am Steve Higgins. You might remember me from two previous episodes of Finding Favorites in which I talked about my love for Doctor Who in the first one back in 2020. And the second time around in 2022, I spoke about my love for The Nightmare Before Christmas. I've also appeared on several of these call-in shows in the past of the year-end wrap-ups and This year, I thought I would call in, just as I did last year, to talk about my favorite film, my favorite TV show, and my favorite theater-going experience of 2023. I want to start with my favorite theater-going experience. This was a year for me where I ended up going to the theater quite a bit, Um, and the show that I have now seen the most and love the most and is probably my favorite musical of all time would be Hades Town. I saw it for the first time in October of 2022 when it came to the Fox, the, the touring company came to the Fox uh, Theater in St. Louis, where I live. And um, since then, I introduced the show to my daughter, who... Uh, was 11 at the time, is now 12, um, who fell in love with the show, absolutely listened to the cast recording over and over and over again on replay every single day for literally months. And so for uh, Christmas last year, we bought her tickets to see the show, the touring company in Kansas City in January. And that was her very first live theater experience and since then we took her to 11 different shows over the course of the year i attended a few other ones that she did not attend um and two of those productions were hades town we saw it in kansas city in january as i mentioned but we also then were taking a road trip in may and surprised her with a little side trip uh, to Louisville in May to see Hades Town in Louisville. Um, her second time seeing it and my third time seeing it. And we are actually currently planning a trip to Broadway in March to see a number of different shows, one of which is going to be Hades Town. Um, absolutely love the show. Uh, the music is incredible. The story is heart-wrenching and moving and beautiful for those who do not know it tells the tale of greek myth to uh, kind of interlocking tales in, of greek myth um, the first of those being the tale of the love of hades and persephone um, how she uh, leaves her husband and leaves the underworld six months of the year to come to uh, the human realm and that is when we have summer 
and then returns below to her husband during the winter months. Um, and it also tells the story of Orpheus and Eurydice. Uh, Orpheus uh, loses his lady love to the underworld and goes into um, the underworld to bring her back out, save Eurydice. It's a story that kind of fleshes out that character of Eurydice immensely. And Ava Noblezada, who plays the character of Eurydice, just has a beautiful voice, is an amazing talent. Um, she sadly is no longer in the Broadway production, um, but uh, she is just amazing. And my daughter thinks so too. Uh, I think her performance is a main reason why my daughter loves the show so much. Um, I have listened, as I said, to the cast recording hundreds of times, but nothing really compares to having seen it live, uh, the, the times that we did see it live, and it was um, moving and beautiful, and I, I cannot recommend seeing Town more highly. I'm very, very hopeful that at some point... Uh, a streaming production of it is released somehow. I think more and more Broadway shows are realizing that there is money to be made in filming and releasing these shows beyond just like one random weekend when it's showing as a as a fathom event. Uh, so I'm hoping that these things start to end up on Broadway HD um, more and more so that I can see the original cast. But um, that was my favorite theater-going experience of 2023. My favorite film of 2023, like a lot of people, was Barbie. Barbie was an amazing, amazing film. I went to see the movie and did the full Barbenheimer experience when it... Uh, when it was released um, back in July, I guess. Uh, saw Barbie first and then went to Oppenheimer, and that was the appropriate way to do it, I think. Um, Oppenheimer I saw in the theater the one time when it came out, and I really don't have any desire to ever see it again. I thought it was a decent film, um, but I saw it the once. I'm good. Whereas Barbie, I saw in theaters at least twice. Did I see it three times? I can't actually recall. Uh, bought it on Blu-ray the day it came out and watched it a couple of times since then uh, because of you know physical media for the win. Um, it is just a moving and beautiful story. Um, I remember when the movie came out and I was raving about it to people, to anybody who would listen to me. And some, uh, some moms asked me, is it appropriate to take my daughter to? And I was kind of asked, well, how old is your daughter? Um, will she get it? Will she understand? Um, it is not a kid's movie. And so a lot of a lot of women, I think, taking their daughters to it, um, their daughters probably didn't get it, didn't understand, and didn't relate to it, which is a good thing, probably, that they didn't relate to it. Um, but it, I think, sadly, the older a uh, young woman will get, the more likely she will see more and more of herself in uh, the characters um, of Barbie and Gloria and Sasha. Um, it's so, uh, powerful. Uh, I, I think it's going to be a real shame if America Ferreira is not nominated for Best Supporting Actress uh, at the Oscars this year on the basis of her monologue alone. Um, that monologue is an amazing piece of acting and an amazing piece of writing by Greta Gerwig and just masterfully directed and just beautiful. Uh, and I, I cannot rave about Barbie more highly. This year, 
uh, those who maybe have heard me on my previous podcast performance, uh, performances, my previous podcast appearances might recall that I am an uh, English professor. I started teaching a film class this semester when the film class started. Barbie was not available on uh, physical media at that time, so I did not teach Barbie this year, but I will. If if I'm given the opportunity to teach this film class in the future, Barbie is going to be on the per- curriculum, absolutely. Um, I did teach uh, a league of their own, and I think it would be a very interesting thing to, to compare and contrast uh, to feminist films that broke into the pop culture zeitgeist at very different times and have very different things to say. Um, to show both of those movies kind of back to back, I think would be very, very interesting. So I'm looking forward to having that opportunity in the future. Um, so favorite film of 2023, absolutely hands down Barbie. And finally, my favorite TV show of 2023 might not surprise anyone who knows my history on the finding favorites podcast. It's doctor who, uh, I have been, an incredible Doctor Who fan, an incredibly huge Doctor Who f- fan for uh, my whole life, as long as I can rem- remember since the age of five or six when I first saw the show. I was engrossed. I was enraptured. I was uh, hooked for life. Um, and this year, Doctor Who returned to form in a beautiful way. Now, that's not to say that I didn't love Jodie Whittaker as the doctor during her uh, tenure. I thought she was great. I thought the show, the writing was uneven at times. And part of that was the pandemic. It can't be helped. Um, You know, a series that was, you know, struggling to stay afloat during the pandemic, during those awful, awful times. Um, You know, it it showed, unfortunately, in the writing, in the production, and... uh, some of the episodes, sadly, were not that good. I hope that in the future, um, 10 years from now, people will reevaluate Jody's tenure as the Doctor and will uh, see the bright spots and not nitpick about the flaws of that time. All of that being said, I, I loved Jody, but this year was the 60th anniversary of Doctor Who, uh, return to David Tennant as the Doctor, um, and then the new Doctor Shuti Gatwa uh, debuted on the Christmas special, his first full episode. Um, there were three anniversary specials, uh, the last of which starred Neil Patrick Harris as the villain of the the piece, um, reuniting. David Tennant with the companion Donna Noble is played by Catherine Tate, and their pairing is just pitch perfect, brilliant. They they just have such chemistry, and um, it was just a return to form. Uh, all four of the Doctor Who specials that aired this year, and I'm so excited for next year and what Shuri Gatwa is going to bring to the role. It's um, it it, it feels like. Doctor Who is back in a lot of ways, and the new partnership with Disney Plus is already proving to be a very fruitful one, um, promotionally, um, budgetarily, and um, uh, in in a storytelling vein as well. Um, I I can't wait to see what the future holds for Doctor Who. I, I'm very excited for. Uh, the next season to drop in, I believe it's going to be in May of 2024. So Doctor Who shouldn't surprise anybody, but absolutely was my favorite show of 2023, even though it only aired four episodes since November 25th. Um, (laughs) uh, Four episodes in the last month, basically, of the year, and it quickly jump to the top of the list. So those are my favorites for 2023. And thank you for allowing me to ramble and call in and uh, let you know what I thought. Thanks.
Hi, Leah. Hi, Finding Favorites listeners. It's Pam Rose, a.k.a. Pamster Pam on the socials and renowned How This Get Made and Jason Manzuka's lover. Here's what I loved in 2023. Let's start with TV because it's my favorite medium. Um, scripted TV. I don't know if it came out in 2023, but I watched it in 2023. Surface on Apple TV. So good. So gripping. So great. I cannot wait for season two. Um, and Loki was fantastic. Season two of Loki. If you haven't watched Loki, get on Loki. It's only two seasons, 12 episodes. It's perfection. He's my favorite Marvel character. Maybe I'm biased, but the show is fantastic. Um, unscripted wise, loving Squid Game the Challenge. So well done. So well done. And on Peacock, if you haven't watched Traders yet, the Traders. Oh my God. You got to watch the Traders. U.S., Traders Australia, and the Traders UK. There's new seasons coming of all of them, and apparently there's a Canada happening, there's a New Zealand happening. I can't wait for all of them. It's so much fun to watch. Let's go music now. Um, I was somehow lucky enough to get tickets to Taylor Swift's Eras Tour. It was epic, even if it was a complete downpour, the whole three-and-a-half-hour show, the girl does not stop. Um, I may have sustained an injury from it because of the rain, but hey, it was worth it. In the concert film, just as good. Kid, kid does good. Uh, let's see what else. Tate McRae has released two songs from her new album that's coming out called Think Later, and they are bangers, so I cannot wait for that. Now let's go over to the podcast world. We know of my love of how this get made. Still love it. Uh, but I want to give a shout out to... Films to be Buried with with Brett Goldstein. If you're not familiar with it, um, he invites a guest on every week, tells them they've died, then asks them questions about movies that kind of shaped their life. Uh, this year had some good guests. Adam Scott was great. Bill Hader was great. I don't know if he was a serial last year, but um, it's a fun show. And it'll give you some ideas for movies that you haven't seen before. And I've watched a few things from it that are great. There is a Patreon for the show for $5 a month that gives you four or five extra questions, but that's unnecessary. You can just enjoy the show as it is as well. Um, so, yeah, give that a look. And speaking of movies, um, I mean, we all, do we all Barbie Heimer? Because I did. They were great. Oppenheimer is not something I would normally see, but Killian Murphy is my favorite actor. And maybe sometime we will talk about that, Aaliyah. Um, and it was a fantastic movie. Barbie was so much fun. So yeah, I cannot wait for 2024 to see what's coming out. Now that the strikes are over, I cannot wait for new content. So hopefully I'll have a whole, whole list for you next year. Have a great year. Hi, Leah. This is Philip Mottas, and I'm just chiming in with some of my favorite things from 2023. Uh, the first of which was getting to see the band The Hives live again for the first time in a while. Um, if you don't know about them, they're one of those bands who came up during the 2000s garage rock revival thing. And uh, they have always sort of been never number one, but always acted like they're number one. So now they refer to themselves as the champagne of bands. And the show was both everything you want from a rock show and also everything you want from a comedy show. It was great. Uh, and the other thing I would like to add um, is one of my favorite things, my family's favorite things, I think, from last year was discovering uh, women's football slash women's soccer. Um, through a story that's far too long to get into here, uh, we started going to Angel City football club games here in Los Angeles, and uh, it's a blast. It's so much fun. I feel like my, you know, the the level at which most American sports fans say, like, I can't get into soccer, somehow I've gotten past that. Um, and not the least of which, uh, reasons being that while I was at the first game, I was just kind of noticing how, like, you know, it's not a lot of nasty, toxic dude energy here. I mean, they we went on a Pride Day, which was cool in and of itself. But 
then we've been to other events and like that's not a one-off thing this is no like dodgers cancel pride night because of reasons type thing like they are both feet deep into all inclusivity progressiveness that you would want from a professional soccer league and i know you know this is total poser stuff but uh, I, it's one of the things that we found uh, the most fun last year. And so consequently, anytime uh, we would talk about it with friends or we, anytime we'd have conversations with friends, you could see uh, – I could see myself sort of steering the conversation toward like talking about that or how excited I was that Sarah Gordon got signed or why Angel City losing McCaskill in the expansion draft to San Diego is going to be kind of a bummer and hard for next year's run. But – It's been a lot of fun, and so that uh, would be one of my favorite things. Um, Thanks for having me on the show. Um, I look forward to talking to you again, Um, and for those of you who want to talk to me, uh, again, my name is Philip Mottas. I'm an author. Uh, I write mystery novels, and you can follow me on most social media, probably preferably Instagram, uh, at Philip Mottas. That's P-H-I-L-L-I-P-M-O-T-T-A-Z. Thank you. My name is Carolyn Musen Berkowitz, and I love snacks. I have equal love for sweet and salty, and this year I discovered the most delicious surprise snack hack. Here's what you need. Pistachios and hot tamales candies. That's it. Grab one of each. Take your pistachio, shell it, and put it in your mouth. Just as you finish chewing it, pop in a hot tamale. Chew. I feel bad spoiling the surprise, but I will. It is going to taste like gingerbread. So good. Now, as a public service, I have tested this recipe with the hot tamale coming first, before the pistachio, and I have tested it eating both at the same time. It doesn't work. You have to eat the pistachio and then the hot tamale. For those who prefer the more mellow Mike and Ike's to the fiery cinnamon of hot tamales, you can absolutely chase a pistachio with a Mike and Ike. Lots of delicious outcomes there, too. I've tested them all. Again, public service. But none are quite as exciting as pistachio plus hot tamale equaling gingerbread. Now, go wow all your friends and family with this extremely niche information. Thank you for listening to Finding Favorites with Leah Jones. Please make sure to subscribe and drop us a five-star review on iTunes. Now, go out and enjoy your favorite things.